Yes. Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft and my series Vikings from A to O. And uh, today it's a uh, letter F and um, yeah a friendly subscriber uh, asked me if I could make a video about uh, food uh, preservation in the Viking Age so um, this is uh, good for me because uh, I can call it food uh, preservation uh, in my series so um, I hope you enjoy this little video where I talk about how the Vikings uh, uh, made their food so it could last uh, all winter and uh, so on and uh, as you saw I put up a tarp uh, it's my uh, linen tarp I made myself I saw it in hand and I used it in the woods uh, but now I think out here if it's raining I can use it and also now when the sun is shining inside the shelter uh, it's better for me to film in here there's no uh, sun in here and it is a little bit more cave-like. So yeah, 
And beside that, I have changed some things here. I'll show you in a minute uh, what I did. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cook uh, some food. I got this pot from a local uh, or a pot maker here in Denmark. And uh, yeah, I actually got it some month ago. And uh, my intention was to use this on the uh, first market I was on this year, but uh, I didn't uh, do that. So uh, now uh, I'll try today and uh, put it in the fire and uh, cook some food in here. And uh, yeah, it's very difficult to make uh, pots uh, out of clay that can uh, stand the heat. So I'm very excited to see if uh, this one uh, can take that. So yeah, a little bit later I'll uh, put over my food in this one. And yeah, I made a little lid for it. So I can uh, have storage in here as well. But uh, yeah, it's a wonderful day out here. Uh, you saw Cornelius is with me. It's been raining uh, almost a month now, on and off, and very windy. But today it's uh, perfect weather. There's no wind and the sun is shining and yeah, it's wonderful to be out here in Kimber Camp again. I'm glad you joined us. So now I want to show you what I've made here. So you can see uh, the little changes I made inside my shelter together with the tarp I just put up. And uh, as you can see here, I have my pack frame. I can lift it up here and uh, put it on run out here. And then I can take my stuff out of the pack frame and I have this stool uh, I can use for other stuff. And then I move the, the skull from the wall and uh, yeah, put some other things over here. I'll show you. Yeah, I bought these little candle holders. Uh, very cheap here. Uh, local in Denmark. Two of them. And I look, I think they look uh, very nice together with my little lamp here and, uh, and so on. Yeah, and uh, most of the food that the Viking uh, head was from hunting and uh, trapping. Uh, trapping is not uh, legal uh, more in Denmark, but in the old days in the Viking Age, uh, they did a lot of trapping too, and of course fishing. Denmark has a uh, lot of uh, water around it, so a lot of the food that uh, the Viking ate uh, was fish. And of course they uh, uh, made bread from the, the corns they have uh, on the fields and uh, they harvest during the autumn. But here in Scandinavia there's a harsh climate and uh, during the winter it could be difficult to hunt and uh, sometimes the uh, rivers and the seas were uh, filled with ice, it was difficult to fish. So uh, they have to depend on uh, things they could get during the summer, the spring and summer and uh, preserve it for the winter. And uh, there were five ways they could uh, preserve the food for the winter. It was drying the food, uh, smoking it, salting it, uh, put it in cools, uh, uh, explain that a little bit later, and of course uh, pickling. Uh, the way they um, dry the food could be outside uh, in the summer, in the sun, but during the autumn they could put it inside and dry it near the fire where the warm is. So that way they could uh, uh, dry different kinds of food. Of course they dried their grains uh, after the harvest, they could dry uh, berries, uh, all kind of berries they uh, picked up during the autumn, and some vegetables, uh, example beans and uh, peas and so on. They could dry fruit, they could dry uh, mushrooms that they uh, harvest during the autumn. Of course they dried meat and uh, last but not least fish. They could dry the fish uh, and uh, here in Denmark we call it clip fish. It can be uh, translated to a cliff or rock fish. Uh, they took the fish and um, put it on some rocks and then the sun dried it. Uh, there were two kinds of uh, fish. The clip fish was uh, normally caught, uh, caught. I think it's called a fish that uh, was salted before it was dried. Uh, that is what we call clip fish. And then there was uh, some flat fish uh, that they dried. Uh, they hang it up in, uh, you can see here in the picture, they hang it up in the, the wind and the sun and then the fish dried uh, slowly uh, during the uh, autumn and uh, the fish got so uh, hard that they had to uh, uh, with a hammer or an axe 
uh, cut it out in small pieces and then they could chew it. But you could also put it in water and boil it. They also smoked uh, fish uh, and meat and they, of course they could put it uh, on top of their uh, fireplace inside the house and then uh, slowly the meat or the fish would be smoked that way. But I'm sure they made some other arrangement where they had a lot of smoke and a smoke uh, kind of smoke oven so that the meat was uh, smoked uh, more quickly uh, that way. And uh, then of course they uh, made sausages and uh, they smoked them too. Uh, another thing uh, they did a lot of was uh, salting the fish. Um, that was a little bit uh, difficult to extract salt here in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, we haven't got salt in the ground so we had to uh, extract it from the sea water and it's a very slow process. So much of the salt they imported from the Baltic Sea, uh, the countries or uh, from the south uh, where they could get it, but it was very expensive so uh, it was uh, not something they used very often in the early uh, stage of the Viking Age. Later the salt was more common and uh, the salted fish was very used in the, the Middle Ages, the late Middle Ages. Uh, they could put uh, a lot of salt, they have a barrel where they put the fish down and the salt between the fish in layers and they put uh, a lid on and then uh, after a while uh, the fish was uh, preserved uh, like that and that way and they could eat it, put it up and then uh, put it in water so uh, most of the salt disappeared again and then they could eat the fish. And they also uh, put on uh, salt on uh, meat and uh, did it uh, the same way as with fish. Uh, then they used uh, something called cool. Uh, we use that still here in Denmark and perhaps you do that in other places too but you dig a ground, a hole in the ground and put the vegetables down there and it could be turnips, parsnip, carrots, parsley root and onion and so on they put in the cools, uh, uh, some sand in the bottom and then uh, the vegetables and over that some straw uh, from the harvest uh, from the cornfields and then the uh, vegetables was outside during the winter and it could last for all winter and uh, that is still something that uh, we uh, make here in Denmark. Then there was pickling. Uh, they didn't have access to vinegar uh, that is most common in pickling but instead they used something called it is called sour wee. It is acid um, uh, and it's made wee is uh, the liquid remaining after milk has been uh, cuddled and strained. It is a byproduct of the manufacturing of cheese. So, so they, they put the vegetables uh, down in some uh, uh, containers and put this in and then the acid from the uh, wee, uh, wye, uh, made it, uh, preserve it for, uh, so they could eat it uh, later in the winter. Then there was the cabbage. Viking ate a lot of cabbage uh, during the winter. It is very uh, nutrition and had a lot of uh, vitamins in uh, and uh, most of the cabbage you can uh, leave outside during the winter. Uh, even some cabbage have to have uh, some uh, cold uh, freezing point before it's edible but they uh, left it outside and then they took it in during winter and put it in stews and so on and soups and it was uh, something the uh, Viking ate a lot of uh, during the winter and uh, in the spring. And, uh, then there of course was the bread, they bake bread uh, very often, most every day uh, and the flatbread is very dry, so you can uh, take that with you if you are going to travel uh, far distances. The flatbread can uh, hold for many weeks if it's uh, kept dry and, uh, and, uh, and cool. So the flatbread was very often used uh, for traveling. But uh, where did the Viking uh, uh, have all these things? In Denmark and here in Scandinavia we call it Fadbur. It's a pantry, uh, a storage house you can see here. Up in Norway and Sweden they have it on poles, uh, lifted off the ground and uh, I'm not sure if they did that in here in Denmark but I know they uh, uh, made some uh, dig it down in the ground as you can see in this picture and uh, there will be uh, cool and there will be uh, dry down there. Uh, the most important thing was that there was no access for uh, animals and rats and so on so they hang it uh, up in the ceiling as you can see in this picture and put it in containers in barrels and, and the pots 
that I use uh, for my cooking too. So uh, the the way they store the food was uh, like that. Uh, it just had to be cool and dry, and then it could uh, last for uh, all winter. And it was very important for the Vikings uh, to have access for food uh, all the time. It was uh, one of the reasons that it could survive in a very harsh climate that we have here in Scandinavia. And the meat was actually a luxury uh, during the Viking Age. They were not uh, every day they got meat, so a lot of cabbage was uh, consumed and uh, also uh, porridge. And uh, the thing I'm going to make today is some porridge from oak. And uh, I'll put some dry things in, like the Viking did, and uh, I'll show you how I'm going to make that. So, but first, I have to uh, light my fire so I can uh, start cooking my food. And uh, in here some oat and one time of that and two times of water like that Then uh, the pot makers told me I should put it beside the fire and then heat it up like that. So I do that and I want to come some salt in like this. Then I put the lid on so it will stay warm and then I just have to wait and see if this pot can hold the heat. And uh, while we wait, I'll show you this. I made some, some dry uh, apples back home. I'm going to put them in, cut them out in small pieces and then um, yeah, put them in the porridge together with some berries. Some dry berries I got here. I think it's called cranberries and to top it up I have some honey for the sweetness of this porridge. This is how the Vikings did it. Yeah. And I got some dry meat here too that I can eat not together with porridge but now and cornudos like this too. Mm. Isn't that my cornelius? There you are. Mm. So good. Yeah. I think it will take a while before this pot is cooking, but um, who doesn't like slow food? You have to be careful the 
lip doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Two big pieces for you. There you are. Starting to come a little bit wave. So I think it's going to be cooking soon. I'll just turn it again so that the heat will be all over the pot. And again the system here works perfectly. Uh, the air come in this way and pull out the smoke uh, in this little window. So it's very great. Now it's starting to boil, so uh, just have to cook it for some minutes. And uh, yeah, I think I'll put the cranberries in now. Like this. I think the, the porridge is finished. I can put it over here. Come it up in this little bowl. Looking good, I think. And then uh, a little bit of honey on. Yep. And then I think I'll put over the coffee. lower yeah and some more firewood on and then I'm ready for eat
Mm. Very tasty. The apple is soft now. So are the cranberries. Mm. Now the coffee is boiling and Cornelius is barking. I think I'll put it up a bit. Let it rest. Yeah. I think it's time for coffee. If I can do this, it is very hot. Of course, it's very hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 